In this nugget, we're going to walk through the process in the hands-on lab environment of installing the ESXi hypervisor on a host computer. Let's begin. You know what's tricky? It's tricky to run virtual machines on top of a host that's running the ESXi hypervisor from VMware if we don't have that hypervisor software running. So in this nugget, here's what we're going to do. We are going to install the hypervisor ESXi on three hosts, ESXi 1, 2, and 3 respectively. And it's really easy to do. Basically, we boot up this host with an attached CD-ROM drive, and we have the ISO for the hypervisor on that CD-ROM. So when they boot up, they load that image, and it walks us through the install. So for the demonstration, let's go ahead and do the install on ESXi1, and then in the lab environment, you can do the ESXi1 along with me, and you can also go ahead and do the ESXi2 and ESXi3 using the exact same steps that we used for the first one. And that way, the benefit is you have three times the practice of installing ESXi on a host. Now, regarding some of the infrastructure that I want to share with you right now, each of these ESXi hosts has six different network interface cards. In the graphic, we're just representing two network cards, but literally each of these hosts has six different network interface cards that we can use. And when an ESXi host has a physical card that connects out to the physical network, the ESXi host refers to them as VMNIC. Whenever we see that literal term, VMNIC, that's a physical adapter that's connected to an ESXi host, which allows the network connectivity from the ESXi host to the network. So even though each of these ESXi hosts, 1, 2, and 3, have multiple network interface cards, initially we're just concerned with one of them, and that's going to be the one that's connected to the management network. And the management network is an IP address of 192.168.1.0 with a slash 24-bit mask. And the IP addresses that I want to assign for these three ESXi hosts, we can work with them and manage them over the network, is going to be .101 for ESXi1. 102 for ESXi2, and any guesses here? <laughs> you got it. Dot 103 for ESXi3. Also, as part of the lab environment, I've got a Windows server right here that's running the dynamic host configuration protocol that can hand out dynamically IP addresses to these hosts. I also have DHCP reservations already set up so that ESXi1 will get .101, ESXi2 will get .102, and ESXi3 will get .103 by default via the DHCP reservations. But what we can do is, after these boot up and get their IP addresses via DHCP, we could go back in and we will statically configure those IP addresses so they're no longer relying on a DHCP server when they boot to get an IP address. So without further ado, let's take a look at the hands-on lab environment and I'll walk you through how we can power on these machines and do the full install of ESXi on each of our three hosts. So this is what the hands-on lab environment looks like when we first initialize it. There's a link if you log on to the CBT Nuggets website and go to this video. There's a link over on the right-hand side you can click on to launch the hands-on lab that's associated with that video. So what many learners have found to be successful for them, and I want to pass it on to you, is that when you first start a video, if you click on the link for the hands-on lab and let it initialize in the background, that gives it a few minutes to get everything initialized and going while you're enjoying the video. Other students have chosen to watch the whole video first and then go back and watch it again and then step through the hands-on lab as they watch the video a second time. And if you have a second monitor or if you watch the video on an iPad or a tablet or a smartphone and do the hands-on lab on the computer, that can make it even more convenient for you to get the hands-on practice using the lab environment. And if this is your first hands-on lab environment at CBT Nuggets, welcome aboard. Let's do a brief overview. Over here on the right, we have the control panel, if you will, for the various virtual machines. If you click here, for example, it takes us to the Windows computer. If we click here, it takes us to ESXi1. If we click on here, it connects us to ESXi2 and so forth. Also, this is the password that we're going to use everywhere in the lab. So instead of having to type that out every time, as a convenience, you could go ahead and put the cursor where you need to in the virtual machine and then click on the little icon that represents the clipboard and it will paste that password into that space. You don't have to use it, but it's a convenience that makes it a little bit easier to put in passwords. So our goal right now for you and I is to install the hypervisor ESXi on each of our three hosts. So let's go ahead and click on ESXi1 over here on the right. And I thought it would be fun for you and I for this lab to leave this machine off initially so that when you and I click on start, we can see every single step regarding the initialization and installation of ESXi. 
So with that being said, let's go ahead and click on Start to turn on this machine. And if there's a pop-up like this that says, are you sure you want to start this machine? Just go ahead and click on Yes, and that will boot this machine. And now it's going through the initial menu for the ESXi, and now it's actually loading this up from the CD-ROM. So currently on the hard drive on this host, it is blank. It's not formatted, it's 80 gigs in size, and we're just reading and loading all of this from the attached CD. And in the interest of time for this video, I'm going to go ahead and speed this up until it asks us for any user interaction. Now it's welcoming us to the installation, and we're going to press Enter to continue. Now, during the install, if you clicked outside of this window here, go ahead and make sure you click somewhere in this space to bring control back to this computer before you press Enter. So if you press Enter and nothing happens, just click somewhere in this space so that the lab environment knows that you're focused on this computer and not something outside of this lab computer. With that said, we'll go ahead and press Enter to continue. And then we're asked to read the end user license agreement, and then we're going to press F11, as indicated right here, to accept and continue. So we'll press F11 to continue. It's going to scan for available devices. This takes a moment. It indicates I have a local hard disk that's 80 gigabytes that it can use. If we want to accept that, we'll go ahead and press Enter to continue. So we'll do that, we'll press enter. It's asking us to select a keyboard layout. US default is currently selected. We'll press enter to continue. Now it's asking us for a password. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on this little clipboard icon over here for ESXi1, which will put the password in that spot. So we'll click on the clipboard next to password. And then we'll click back over here in this box here and then hit the down arrow to go down to the confirm password field and then I'll go ahead once again and click on this clipboard next to password to put it in and then I'll click once more over here with my mouse to put the control back in this window and then we can press enter to continue. It wants us next to confirm the install warning us that the disk is going to be repartitioned so we'll press F11 to go ahead and install the software. And again, due to the magic of editing, I'm going to speed this up a little bit so it'll be faster to watch. Also, what we could do while this is installing on ESXi1, we could go over here in the control on the right-hand side of the lab environment, go to ESXi2, and do the same exact thing. Meaning, follow the prompts, put in the password, and start the installation here as well. And we could also do that on ESXi3 as well. So effectively, it's the same process on all three to get the ESXi hypervisor installed on each of these three hosts. So for the benefit of this video, I'm going to go back to ESXi1. We'll focus our full attention on ESXi1, and then we'll want to repeat that process on ESXi2 and ESXi3. Now, when you're doing this installation, and it goes to 27% like this, and you think, well, it's been there for like two or three minutes, that's normal for this lab environment regarding the 27% mark. So it'll continue. Just give it a few minutes to let it finish. <laughs> All right, it says the installation is complete. We're gonna go ahead and click inside this box here just to make sure the focus is in this window. And then it's asking us to press enter to go ahead and reboot this ESXi host, which will now run and launch the hypervisor ESXi from its local hard disk. So we'll go ahead and press enter to go ahead and do that reboot. And now, ta -da -da -da, it is done. ESXi the hypervisor is now running on this host. So here's the IP address that it got from DHCP of 192.168.1.101, and that's because I have a DHCP reservation for this specific MAC address running on this network interface card on this ESXi host. So it knew exactly which one to hand out. And it's also picked up a link local address regarding IPv6. And what we'll do in our next nugget is I'll walk you through how we can use the direct console user interface on this ESXi host to change this IP address so it's static IP address for IPv4. And we can also disable IPv6 if we want to as well. So now in the hands-on lab, what I'd like you to do is do this installation as well for ESXi1 and then repeat the process for ESXi2 and ESXi3 in the hands-on lab. So have some fun with that in the hands-on lab for practice. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.